Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and welcome to the highly anticipated series of videos on Majestic's amazing Dash 8 Q400. I'm going to intermittently call this the Dash 8, which I know people hate, and intermittently call it the Q400, which I hate as far as I'm concerned as a Dash 8, but whenever you hear Q400 or Dash 8, I mean that. Now, for some ridiculous reason, some porter pilot from way up north has managed to land this at St. Bart's. Yeah, yeah. This is St. Bart's. It's notorious because of this approach. Planes actually come over this hill and then fly this hill down onto the runway. This is actually fly Tampa scenery. And the problem with this for us, I mean, the guy managed to get it on the ground okay. It looks intact. He couldn't put it on the uh, taxi lines. He'd be putting the wing through the building. Um, but the problem for us is actually this runway. It's very old. It's quite bumpy. It's quite heavily scarred because of the amount of other aircraft that have crashed into it. And <laughs> it's not very long and it ends in the ocean and the hill. So taking off is going to be a challenge. What we're actually going to do here, though, I'm going to take a break from the normal series of uh, flights that I do. So it's not going to be full procedural. For this first flight, because this aircraft has such a great flight model and flight engine, we're actually going to do a manual flight in this first one. So I'm picking up 20 passengers from here, St. Bart's. They came down for a party on a boat, got a little bit drunk and stranded. we got to get back to Miami. So we're going to take these passengers from St. Bart's all the way out to Princess Juliana in St. Martin. And then after we've landed at Princess Juliana, the next set of videos would be the procedural ones, flying a full um, flight plan and everything else from Princess Juliana out to Miami. So this should be a giggle. Let me jump into a cockpit and uh, we'll start working through this thing. Whoops, we're all upside down. I have got track IR enabled, as you can see. I'm going to actually turn it off, though, for now. Now, the cool thing with this, there's a number of cool things with this aircraft. Anybody that's seen my first impressions knows that I kind of love this aircraft. I love the level of detail in it. It has a very high fidelity flight engine. It's an external flight engine. I know PMDG extracts some elements of their flight engine, but not the whole thing. This is actually a flight engine from NASA that is used to simulate this aircraft. It is rather good. It's also a very, very complex aircraft designed to be flown by two people. We don't have FS to crew, which means I'm doing two people's jobs. Now, the documentation that comes with this aircraft Aircraft. It had a tutorial flight in it, which frankly is awful. Um, thankfully, Majestic got a real pilot involved who did a more advanced tutorial, which you can download from their website. Go to Majestic's website, click on resources, it's up there somewhere, which is written by a Dash 8 pilot, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. It's a great thing because it covers everything. It's a bad thing because sometimes he expects you to know stuff that you don't, so he misses some stuff. One of the core takeaways from his spreadsheets, though, or his checklist, uh, sorry, his tutorial, is that he details the flows and the checklist. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, big commercial aircraft like this, people carriers, tube liners, Pilots and first officers do flows and checklists. Flows are memorized, and they're typically visual. So the first flow we'll do here is a visual one, um, visual in that it follows a pattern. So we start here, we work up here, we go up here, then we go up here, and then up here, and then we come back all the way down this side here. So you can see there is a visual pattern that gets followed. And then similarly, when we do the startup flows, you go down this panel, up this panel, down this panel, and so on. Those are flows, they're memorized, nothing serious to them. Checklists are normally used to double check what happened in the flow. So there's a strong chance that a pilot or a first officer, a captain first officer would, might forget something. That's where the checklists come in. Now what I've done, for those of you who are interested, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash frugal sim. I have collated all the flows and all the checklists for the Dash 8 from Majestic into a single set of combined flows and checklists for Avlosoft's EFB. I'm going to be uploading those onto the Facebook page in the coming weeks. So if you have Avlosoft's EFB, you'll be able to download them. And it kind of puts them all in a logical order because Majestic's documents have the flows and the checklists separately. So first things first, we're going to dive straight into the power-up flow and walk through setting all this up. I've already used um, the external control panel to set up my passengers, my cargo. We're carrying 500 pounds of cargo. There are 20 people on board, the drunkards from last night, 3,000 pounds of fuel, giving us a total uh, weight of 44,878 pounds. We are gonna need all that in a little while, but not right now. So following this flow, first thing we do is check circuit breakers, make sure that they are all good, that nothing's sticking out. That's not actually simulated in the pilot edition of the uh, Q400 here. So we will just say that that's done. We check now that the gear lever is down, it is. We check that the radar is off, which it is. There's the radar there, it goes off, test, standby, and so on and so on. Oh, we're gonna start powering up actually in this uh, initial power up flow, my apologies. So, uh, batteries. Now they are turned on in a certain order. You turn battery master on first, you'll hear 
noise, which is great. Then the main battery, auxiliary battery, standby battery, they are now all on. Next, we couple them or tie the main bus tie. Pretty simple. Next, we make sure that the uh, position lights are on, which they are. Position lights are on. Make sure that the flight deck displays are coming on. Well, they're not. We need to turn some knobs down here. Let me go ahead and set these up. The views are being changed by Easy Dock Camera. I get asked that on every video. Easy Dock Camera for FSX is how my view is managing to float around the cockpit, as you just saw. Just turn these, light Thank these up. Angle. Now, typically, you actually wouldn't need to use this flow because Majestic's Q400-8 starts up in a warm state. It's got engines off, but all the power is on. I managed to power it down and then save the flight with it powered down, so we're doing the full set of flows in this video. Uh, so flight deck displays are on. Standby and PTU pumps, those are these. They are off. Emergency brake should be set. There it is. That's all set. External power APU, we can bring that online right now. There is a procedure to follow for bringing this online, which I will show you right now. So let's pop on up to the overhead. You turn power on, the APU will run through its uh, checklist. You'll see the uh, checklist, ch self-check. You'll see all those lights flash through. Once they finish flashing through like that, we click on start. Now you have to wait a little while. And you're waiting for a, a light there to change, indicating that it's now started and available. We can't actually hear it here in the cockpit, but if I were to go external right now, you'd hear a small jet engine in the back of the aircraft. That is the auxiliary power unit. Most people don't realize it is actually a very small jet engine that is embedded in the tail of the aircraft. Come on, light up. There we go. Power is running. Generator on. So APU is now on. And then FMS, we're going to initialize the FMS. The flight management system down here. We do that by turning these displays on. They are initialized. We're not going to accept the text on them just yet. And that is the end of that flow. So having done that, the next flow is actually the captain's originating checks. So having gone through the power up flow, the captain has now received the aircraft. And this is the state that you'd kind of get it in if you load this aircraft um, in its default state from Majestic. So this is where that uh, visual pattern I showed you comes into play. So landing gear, extension door. This isn't simulated in the pilot edition, but you pop open that door, click on a switch, look for three lights here, make sure this handle's down, everything there is good. Next up, the alternate release door. Okay, again, not really simulated, but we'll say that's all good. Next up, the escape hatch. Yeah, we're not gonna be messing with that. That is closed, we never touch it. Oxygen masks. Very easy, make sure you can see these green bands which indicates they're in a good state, ready to go. Next, demisters, otherwise it suddenly gets very foggy despite what ATIS says. So we'll turn the demisters on. Next up, DC control panel battery switches. Well, we already did that in our power up flow, so we don't care. So the next item is generator one and two. So let me pop back up to the overhead here. Generators one and two, on. And now we're starting to work down this panel. So the flow now is gonna go down here, up here, across, down here, up here, and so on. Very visual, very easy to remember after you've done it just a few times. Main bus tie is tied. We've already got that. <coughs> Ice protection panel. Airframe mode select is off. Engine intake doors are both closed. You can tell from the green lights. Ref speed switch is off. Now the ref speed switch, if you do actually run into icing conditions, you'll turn that on and it increases your V-ref speeds. Very useful to know, especially when you're coming into land. Uh, pilot static, or sorry, pitot status switches are all off. Propeller ice protection is off. Boot air switch is normal. Where's boot air? There it is. Down would be ISO in where it is is normal. Windshield panel, windshield heat is off. We're in the tropics. We don't really need that anyway. Wipers, we might need them, but they're currently off. Pilot side, window heat is off. Now we can come across to the lights. So approach flare and taxi lights are all off. Our altimeter units here, we are going in feet, so that's perfect as it is. Flight data recorder, is that armed? Well, uh, yes, it is armed currently, so no problem there. We can do a ground test if you want to. Doesn't really matter, it doesn't function. Uh, fire protection panel, right up here. <clears throat> Make sure these big handles are pushed in and that there are no lights up here which shouldn't be lit up here. Excuse me. <coughs> and then we can start running through the test. So, let's do the aft baggage test first. Go test one. Okay, expected to hear an alarm, but didn't. Let's try test two. There's the alarm. Let's try test one again. Oh, now it's working. Bit of a bug there, I found. Do the forward baggage test. <coughs> now we'll do the main engine fire test. Engine one. Engine two. 
And then APU fire test, which I'm not going to do because the APU is running. I should have done that previously. We'll just say that works. I don't have failures turned on. There's no reason why it shouldn't work. So that's done. Um, emergency lights. We're going to drop all the way down here now, the bottom of this panel. So rather than going top down now, we're going bottom up. So emergency lights are armed because that switch is in the middle. Uh, next up, fasten seatbelt switch. I'm going to turn that on. No smoking we all turn to on. Now, advisory test and caution. Let's change my view here. If we do the caution test, okay, everything lights up. We hear a chime. Advisory, most of the things light up. We don't hear a chime. So that's all working. We are all good to go. Air conditioning panel. Pack switches. Where are my pack switches? Packs. Ah, here we are. These two. They are both on auto. It's hard to read. There are three positions. At the top is off, in the middle is manual, at the bottom is auto. So they are in auto. Uh, the research switch. You turn that on, you should start to hear the air circulating through the cabin. There it goes. Bleed air 1 and 2 should be off, which it is. AC control panel, AC gen switches 1 and 2 should be on. External power off. Okay, captain's side panel. Let's just drop this view down here. Actually, I should have kept going. I have an easy dot view set up for this. Incidentally, if enough people ask, I might put my easy dot profile for this aircraft up as well on Facebook. So, EGPWS e flaps override. That's these switches down here. We don't going to mess with those. There's a the flaps override there. The cover is down. We will say that that's all good. ADC test one and two. These are neat. If you go ADC test one, look at the speed. Speed's reading out uh, 285, altitude 14360. Got a warning, got a chime going, very good. That's all working as it should. <coughs> Test two. Notice we're now negative 120 feet, 30 knot speed. There's my chime, everything is good. Next up, store warning test. Whoops. Click and hold it. There's the stick shaker, you can hear it. Everything's working good there. We can test number two if we want as well. All right, nose wheel steering is actually on right now. It should be off. This is why we do these flows. Glare shield, flight taxi switch. Now, this changes the aircraft's mode, already the mode of the engines. It gives you a readout on the dash when you're taxiing to show that your propellers are in ground range and not over speeding. That needs to be in taxi. We will turn that off for flight. If we forget, this is a Porter Q400, um, then it will automatically flip, switch to flight, but we're not going to forget. So flight taxi switch is set. Stick pusher, elevators, trim, shutoffs. Um, these, they are cleared. There are no lights on there. We're good. Flight guidance control panel. That would be all of this. We will set that up in a little while. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Pilot static isolation switch. I always forget where the hell that one is. So I'm going to skip it. Oh, actually, I think it's one of those down there. Uh, but we are going to skip that one. What's the next one? Integrated standby instruments. Check that they are all working. Well, yep, everything is all good. Clock's up. There's not that many standby instruments. Artificial horizon is up here. We're all good. We will turn on this one. Let me just zip over there with my camera. That's a backup comm unit. We will turn that on, so that's all good. Where am I? Landing gear lever. We already know that that's down. GPWS landing selector. We're on flaps 10 right now. We'll leave that until we come in for landing up at Princess Juliana. Hydraulics control panel checked. We already did that. All those switches are off. AHRS panel. Um, okay, that's all good as well. Uh, pitch roll disconnect handles. These two handles, they are in a correct position, so we're all good there. Fuel control panel, which is down here. That is all good. There are no lights on. There is no cross flow or transfer happening with this switch, so we're all good there. Propeller control. Again, auto feather switch is off. There is no light on indicating that it would be on, so we're good there. Emergency brake is set. Oh, auto feather test would be next. I actually skipped one. The way we do an auto feather test is very simple. We just check all my controls are calibrated here which they are so we have power levers and we have condition levers condition levers also act as fuel cutoff and start so to, the way we do an auto feather is you turn the auto feather switch on move the condition levers up to start and feather and then what will happen is you will see an in test message here you'll see various call outs here it will run through the auto feather test and at the end say complete at which point we will turn off auto feather and then return the condition levers to fuel cutoff. So we'll just wait for that right now. All right, so I cut the video there because that test does take a little while, but you can see AF test has passed. 
So auto feather off, return the condition levers to cut off, we are all good. Next on the list then, control lock. Now this is a neat thing. The control lock on the ground stops us advancing the throttles too much and over speeding or basically getting airborne a little bit too early. So we'll engage that like so. That stops us overpowering those two engines as we go. Power lever should be in disconnect, which they currently are. You can see there's disconnect underneath that. So we're currently good. Actually, just the power levers will actually move a little bit beyond disconnect, which is the beginning of beta phase, which is reverse. When you're taxiing this, you don't tend to use the brakes. You reduce the, th the power levers to just under disconnect. It puts it slightly in beta range. Reverses kick in. It slows you down. It's quite neat. Um, what else have we got? ARCDU. That is this stuff down here. That needs to be all on. So we'll turn that on. We will turn that on. They're all initialized now. We are golden. Trims, we will test those by trimming nose up. Actually, that didn't work quite the way I wanted it to. Let me try that again. You should hear a bing. There's the bing. Rest of the trims are zero, zero, zero. So we're all good on those. EFIS control panel as required. So now actually would be a good time to run through setting up the rest of the EFIS and our flight that what we're going to do. So we already know that our... our uh, weight, as I said, it's 44,878 pounds. The Q400 comes with a set of uh, takeoff and landing speeds, which we're going to use. Now, given that we are at uh, St. Bart's and it's a ridiculously short runway, in fact, it's just about the minimum length of runway this aircraft can handle, we are going to be doing a tremendous full power, max power, flaps 15 takeoff. So looking at the chart here, I've got it actually on paper in front of me, 44,000 pounds at 15 flaps temperature right now is um, just right so that puts us at V1 of 98 VR of 98 and V2 of 105 knots so basically going to get airborne just about as quickly as we can now the way we set this up is actually down here it's where we set the uh, bugs click on select there's V1 so V1 is 98 VR is 98 in the Q400, V1 and rotate are the same. V2 is 105. Now we have V Fry, which is our climb speed. Now V Fry, looking on this chart, is at flaps 15, 109. Perfect. So let's go down to the full triangle there. There it is. We'll just dial that in too, so our bugs are set. What we will do now, 109 frugal, is tune in ATIS, check the weather so we can set the barometric pressure. I can do that down here. I'm using Active Sky for the weather. So Active Sky broadcasts its weather ATIS on 122. Tango, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Juliet, Information, Echo, 1308, Zulu, Weather, Wind, 104, At, 10, Visibility, 10, Sky Condition, 7400, Scattered, Ceiling, 13000, Broken, Light, Rain, Temperature, 272.22, QH, 1018, Advise on initial contact, you have information, Echo, Okay, so that gave us a QNH of 1018. The problem is that we're using imperial measurements. So in my handy mathematical calculator known as my brain, I will convert that to 30.05. We'll dial that in. Let's turn this up here. So 3005. There we go. 3005. That is all set. Now it's indicating negative on the altitude. We'll just dial that up a little bit to set it. There we go. Oh, it's still going to go negative. That's just fine. Now, FMS. We're not going to be using a flight plan. It is going to be a full manual flight, somewhat. We will use the autopilot, but manual in terms of we're not following a route and having the computer plot us on that route. If we wanted to, we could actually go in here and set in the flight plan. I'm just not going to bother because it's not worth it. The next set of videos on this, however, will use this extensively. So we're not going to bother with that. What we do need, though, is to set up our frequencies. Now, we are flying to Princess Juliana in St. Martin. Princess Juliana does not have an ILS. It is a full visual approach. What it does have, though, is a VOR, a very, very handy VOR. And I'm looking at charts here to try to find it. I think it's 103. 113.0. Uh, the way you set that up, 
click on the radio you want to set. So you can see VHF 1, 2, NAV 1, NAV 2, or VOR 1, 2. So here we go. Click on this. Dial it up. So 113.00. Whoops. Got to click the out a bit here. 113. Done. That is all set. So that's the only radio we're going to need to bother with, really. Nothing else to worry about there. Actually, we will be needing, looking at the chart, VOR Y chart to runway 10 of Princess Juliana. Once we overfly Princess Juliana, we are going to turn on left onto a heading of 288 degrees for 10 miles. So we will go up and we will set that stuff up in the autofly system up here. So here's the autofly system. Now notice down here it's showing me VOR. You can change the nav sources being used by rolling this. So there's FMS. There's VOR, there's ILS, FMS2, and so on and so on. We're using VOR. We're going to set up a course here already before we even get there of 288. So once we overfly, or once we get to Princess Juliana, we're going to turn on to 288 and fly out for 10 miles. Now in the meantime, we are going to take off from here and we are going to climb up to an altitude of 4,000 feet. So I'm going to dial up 4,000. Now this is where things get interesting. All I'm doing here is selecting an altitude. Now basically the Q400 will level off at that altitude when we hit it. It won't fly us to that altitude. That's important to know. But having dialed in the altitude of 4000, we click on Alt Select. Okay. The next thing we need to do is click on the Take Off Go Around button, which is on the side of the throttle. There. Watch the display. Boom. See that? It's now gone wing level. Go Around is set. Climbing up to 4000. If I click on Alt Cell now, there we go. Altitude Select. So it's going to power us up to 4,000 feet and then hold us at 4,000 feet after we take off if I engage the autopilot at that point. We will engage the yaw damper right now and we're also going to turn um, now let me see let us turn to the south let's turn to the south after takeoff I think that will work so I'm going to roll the heading bug here down to southish right about there now we need to turn as soon as we take off because there's a bloody great hill at the end of the runway so we're going to turn south and then climb to 4000 then we'll mess around a little bit before we head to princess juliana so everything is all set up here i will click on heading select as well there we go heading select is set altitude select is set 4000 feet go around we are good to go that was the captain's uh, originating check flow now we're going to do the first officer check. Remember, this is a two-person aircraft, as it should be. So the first officer is pretty much the same as the captain. We can skip a lot of stuff very quickly. ATIS, has it been copied down? Yes, we've set the barometric pressure. Oxygen masks, we already checked them. Circuit breakers, we checked them. First officer side panel, has that been checked? All right, let's pop over there to the side panel. This is the only time you'll need to use the first officer side panel. Make sure everything there is where it should be. Okay, good, 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 good. Everything is golden for us right there. Anti-skid switch, it wants us to test it. Okay, that works. And now leave it on. So that's good. EGPWS tested. That is this top button here. It is not labeled, but it's that top button. Now, if you hold this in, you basically click this button, hold it in, and go get a coffee. It takes a long time to run through all the tests. It's a bit like the NGX's test where it goes 3,000, 4,000, 500, 20, whatever. You know, we're not going to do that. We'll just do a quick left click once. Slide slow. Okay, Hold that vocalized up. what we expected to vocalize. Terrain. Got Terrain. some lights flashing. Up here, there'll be more lights Hold flashing. Up. There you go. Good. So that's done. Flight instruments set. Yep, we've already done that on the captain's side. Center pedestal. Let's check it. Okay, everything is good here. These lights are all off. These lights are all off. Uh, everything is looking golden right now. Radios are all on. We are good. Uh, AHRS, we've checked that. Now, ARCDU, radios and radar. So, ARCDU should be on. Radio should be set, which we've done. And radar now needs to go into test. That would be down here. So, let me zip on back to the pilot's side. It's easier to look at it from there. And we will flick that up into test. Click, click. Now, with that testing, what we can do is actually switch this display on the right-hand side. So I'm going to switch that over here to nav. You see it on nav there, and we will click up here and say weather radar. And then you can see it running its test. See that? So test worked. So with that done, we will actually switch it back onto systems, and we can keep an eye on the electrical systems and hydraulics. 
Okay, so having done those two flows, Captain and First Officer power-up flows, or originating flows, and now we would actually run through the power-up checklist. And you'll see that if you've memorized the flows, I haven't. I'm actually working from my um, Avosoft EFB thing that I produced. But if you've memorized them, you'll find the checklist goes extremely quickly, as you're about to see. So here we go, aircraft power-up checklist, circuit breakers checked, landing gear down, radar is off, battery master, main aux and standby are all set, main bus tie is tied, Exterior lights are as required, flight deck displays are on, standby and PTU pumps are off, parking brake is actually set, it's actually as required in the checklist, external power or APU is on, FMS is initialized, aircraft power up checklist complete. That's why flows are so damn cool. I urge you to memorize them. Okay, so now we're on to the before start flows. Getting ready to start this aircraft and take off. So before start flow, very, very simple. APU or external power, we need to check that it's on and check its voltage and everything else. Well, we know it's on, we can hear all the fans, we can go over here and check the voltages as well. 0 0.96 on the load, it is producing power, we know it is, everything looks good there. Okay, circuit breakers, once again, they're not going to pop out, they're not simulated in this version, so check. Escape hatch, we know it's closed and nobody's dropped in, so we're good to go there. Nose wheel steering should still be off, I haven't turned it on, so that's great. Uh, flight guidance control panel is set. We have set all this up, ready for our climb to 4000, turning to the south. We have also set our course for the VOR once we get to Princess Juliana, so that is done. Hydraulic number three pressure, checked. Now this is interesting, look down here. There's our hydraulic pressures, notice number three is up. That is where it should be. We are good to go there. Um, emergency brake, uh, parking brake is checked. That is on. Condition levers are in fuel off or cut off if you're a Boeing person. Emergency lights are armed. We set those up earlier. Fasten seat bus switch is on. Departure briefing. Our departure briefing, I just told you, we are going to depart on runway 10. We will be clenching all the way down the runway because it is a very short runway and it's now raining. At the end of the runway, we will pull back until it hurts, then turn to the south, climbing to 4,000 feet, hopefully without too much screaming from the people in the back. Next, the starting engine flow. Starting the engines in this is actually very, very simple. Check that the doors are closed. How do we do that without going to an external camera? Very simple. Come down here, click on doors. Everything should be green, which it is. No doors are open, we're good to go. Battery, master, main, aux, and standby are still all on. Nobody accidentally turned them off yet. Our beacon is on. We're gonna turn that to red right there to show that we're about to power up. APU bleed air is off. That's bleed air right there. It is off, we are good to go. Engine number two, check that it's clear. So the first officer will lean out the window and shout clear. And assuming nobody yells back, please wait, 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 then we're good to go. They haven't yelled back, wait, 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 good to go. So let's do the starting engine checklist. This is actually a checklist now, not a flow. Batteries on, checked. Doors and fueling lights noted and off. Beacon light is on, APU bleed is off. Engines are clear. We are good to start the engines. Normally at this point you talk to ATC, maybe get pushback, they would clear you to start the engines. We're not gonna bother with that. Here's how we start the engines. Very, very simple. Turn both ignition systems to normal. Select engine number two by right clicking. When you are ready, click on start. As soon as you do that, move the condition lever for that engine up, as I just did. You see it's in start and feather. You will see the engine uh, readouts start to increase. N1 coming up. Crop RPM very slowly coming up. A little bit of noise now. Not a huge noise at this point. That click click means the starter just disengaged. We look up here to make sure, or is about to. Oh no, it actually, there we go, it's actually disengaged now. So left click, engine number one, start, move the condition lever for engine number one up. I already moved it, it's tied to the same control for me as two. So watch engine one here, coming up. Once the engine stabilized, this next bit is extremely counter. If you're familiar with Boeing's and normal jets, we will turn the condition levers to maximum. If you're familiar with um, more classic aircraft like Cessnas, think of condition levers as prop pitch. That's why it makes sense to go to maximum. 
but turning anything to maximum while still on the ground in a Boeing would be a terrible mistake. So maximum, listen to the engines. Now we got that classic dash A sound. Okay, let's go through the flow, the captain's after start flow. Condition levers, max, which they are. APU, turn the APU off by turning generator off first. Wait 60 seconds and then click power. Since it's a simulator, we don't care. There go the engines. Oh my God, I'm deaf. Turn my speakers down. Wow. <laughs> APU is now off. There we go. Main bus tie now actually goes off. Ice protection. We're going to leave that exactly as it is. Rudder travel. Check the travel. So grab your rudder pedals. Give them a kick. Make sure they work. They do. Full travel. We're good. Nose wheel steering now goes on, just in case we do actually need to start moving this aircraft, which we do in a few minutes. So nose wheel steering goes on. Uh, radar should now go to standby, which starts it warming up, ready for when it gets used in the air. MFDs set them both to nav. You currently see the co-pilot first officer is on system. He is now nav. He's currently got that radar display running up there, which is not a problem. Cool. Okay, so with all that done, I actually lost track of my, my list here. Uh, we now go to the first officer after start flow. Now the first officer has some important stuff to do. First officers typically do all the useful stuff in an aircraft, not the captain. So auto feather goes on. Engine rating. We're actually going to set that on the runway. There are a number of engine ratings we can select from reduced takeoff power to maximum takeoff power. Obviously, we are going to go maximum takeoff power. We'll set that on the runway just because of the nature of this sim. It tends to kick itself down to end top, which is normal takeoff power. Uh, tank aux pumps, one and two, put those on. Standby and PTU hydraulic pumps, put those on. Uh, hydraulic three and elevator, check. Now, this is interesting. All the pressures are up on hydraulics. If we look up here, there is a light saying elevator pressure. You need to move the elevator, like so. You see all the pressure gauges change at that point. Light goes out. Uh, De-ice pressure, that's all good as well. And bleed air as required. Let's put bleed air to minimum for now. And to get rid of some more warning lights, we turn the pedostatics on. That gets rid of all of those. There is only one caution light on right now, which is parking brake. So now the checklist. Remember those were flows, so the checklist. After start checklist. If you've got the flows down pat, then the checklist go very, very quickly. So here we go. External power APU is off. Main bus tie is off. Ice protection is, we've checked that. We're not using anything. Rudder travel, full travel. Rudder actuator chest is complete. Nose wheel steering is on. Auto feather is selected. Engine rating we are gonna select on the runway as maximum takeoff power, MTOP. Batteries are checked. We did look at those earlier on. Flaps. We have not set the flaps. This is why we have a checklist. We are doing a maximum flaps takeoff, which is a flaps 15 takeoff. One, two, three. It's going to be a bumpy takeoff. Uh, AUX standby and PTU pumps are on. Those four lights right there. Hydraulic uh, number three and elevator pressure is all set. Caution lights gone out. Caution and warning lights are all out. Flight instruments and radios are set. Altimeters are set and cross-checked. Again, nature of the sim. If you set it here, it is set there. Ice protection test we have not done. I'm not actually going to worry about it, but the way you would do that for the ice protection test is just click this on and hold it onto test. It takes a little while to run. We are not going to need anti-ice. We're in the tropics in June. We will be just fine. Okay, so now we can go and get onto the runway. Now the tricky thing is, if we taxi up here, we're going to collide with this hill, which is a problem. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to go up here onto the runway, then turn around over there. And that will be the end of this video. In the next video, we'll do the actual takeoff and flight down to Princess Juliana and landing because it's such a, such a short trip. Let's get rid of this flashing light. Okay, so here we go. Brakes off. We go power up now. Now, taxiing in this, your rudder pedals give you eight degrees of turn. You have a tiller down here, which gives you a lot more. That's actually tied to my yoke on the ground. So I feed in full rudder. Let me turn on track IR as well at this point. And then turn that tiller and we will start turning. It's a little counterintuitive. That's how it works though. Actually, my views are all kinds of screwed up. Oh, because I have a microphone in my face. Let me turn off track IR. That's not gonna work. Okay. A little bit more power here, just to get our turn going. And while we're gently coasting up here, 
I am going to move this microphone and turn track IR back on. I actually do desperately need it for this next turn that's coming up. Let me just recenter that and turn it on. Okay, good. All right, that's a lot better. Okay, so we're going to do what we're not supposed to do, but this aircraft's really not supposed to be here anyway. I'm going to turn in there, and then my wife would call it flipping a something, but we'll call it a U-turn. Very tight U-turn, watching the power, watching the speed. I'm going to try to get as close up here as I can, but remember, I, don't, I have quite long wings. If I hit that hill with the right hand wing, we're in trouble. But we don't want to use up all of our runway trying to line up because we kind of need the whole thing. All right, tight now. The nose wheel is slightly behind the captain's seat. Okay, good. Now we have a bit of an issue. For some reason, my uh, controls have gotten out of sync. Let's see if we can address that. There we go. Right, my controls are still a little bit out of sync, but we'll take it as red. Alright, so full over on the tiller. Trying to get this thing turned without rolling down the runway too much. That is about seriously as much runway as I could possibly spare. Alright, well thank you for watching. In the second part of this video we will be doing the takeoff straight into the side of that hill and turning left and then flying out to Princess Juliana. As always, my name is Frugal. If you've not checked it out already, please check out facebook.com slash frugalsim where you can get behind the scenes information on these videos as well as chat to me. See you later, guys.